Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to look at it through the lens of the money supply, M2. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, by far, I've received this request probably more than any other request, especially over the last six months. And it makes a lot of sense why people would suggest that we account for this in our discussions of Bitcoin. And so we will try to occasionally touch base on this as we continue on through the market cycle. Now, you guys recognize this chart, of course, right? It's nothing more than our Bitcoin valuation going all the way back to 2011, 2010. And you can see our general accumulation phases and our general selling phases, okay? Pretty standard stuff. However, we should sometimes talk about this in lieu of the money supply. Now, the reason the money supply is important is because if you imagine, you know, if there's just more money circulating in the economy, then more people have more money to buy things like Bitcoin or milk, right? So when there's when there's more money, money circulating, obviously it could lead to inflated prices as more people have that money and then they continue to buy assets with that money um, thus continuing to inflate the price and m2 so m2 it it essentially encompasses everything of m1 the money supply uh, which is you know like checking checking deposits um, and cash uh, but it's also a little bit more broad than m1 so m2 you know it, it can be used you know, not everything in M2 is necessarily as liquid, uh, but it's a good measure of say, it's good to, it's a good indicator to account for things like inflation and just the general money supply. So you can see that since March, the trend has completely changed. And let's go back. So we know that we, we, we first started talking or we first really had Bitcoin around this, around this area in here. And if you go from when Bitcoin was first essentially started onto the market to March, we were more or less going up at a pretty steady pace, a fairly steady pace for 10 years, for 10 years. However, oh, actually 11 years. However, you can see in March, things have completely changed. And if we had been on the same course as we had been on for the last 11 years, to get to the current money supply, it would have taken another three years or so. So it would have taken another three years if we were to go up, if we had gone up more systematically like we had been for the last 11, it would have taken another three years for us to get to this money supply. Now, how can we use this to investigate Bitcoin? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look back at DXY. This is the US dollar currency index, okay? The, this metric is really great for trying to identify when, when Bitcoin is going to do well or when it's going to do, perform poorly. Here's a time from December of 2016 through January of 2018 where you, the DXY went down 15% and this is what propelled, this is when Bitcoin went to $20,000. So we know that generally speaking, when DXY is doing well, Bitcoin is not doing well. For instance, if you look at 2014, up, up until say early 2015, DXY went up 26%. But we know that during that same period, 2014 to 2015, Bitcoin was in a bear market. So generally speaking, if, if, if the dollar is doing poorly, Bitcoin does well. So far since March, right, which is when all this, when the money supply started going up like crazy because of the pandemic, we are down 12.88% or so. That is when, in March, right here, is when the money supply started going up uh, pretty significantly. And you can see this since March, it is up around, here you can see it's around 20, a little over 20%. So the question, of course, is will the dollar turn around in this region like it did in January of 2018? Will we repeat January of 2021? Will it come back up? Or is the devaluation just getting started and are we gonna come all the way back down? 
Now, if you look at the macro picture of dxy, you can see that when you zoom all the way out, we have two major, you know, like two major concave up patterns, right? Here's one, and then here's another one, okay? Now the question, right, is are we, are we starting another one that's going to take the dollar a lot further, or in fact, are we going to turn around in the short term? So this is something that I think we should keep an eye on. If we start to see the dollar start to push back up, then it might mean the Bitcoin bull market will be delayed for a little bit. However, if we see this continue to come down for a few years, this could end up being a, a pretty impressive bull market by Bitcoin. So this is something we want to keep an eye on. But how can we more directly measure this? And this is, I think, what is, is the most interesting aspect. And I had this chart sent to me by, I think, like at least three or four people. So I, I don't remember all their names, but shout out to them for, for mentioning it. <laughs> Some shout out, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of requests uh, for pe for, from people to look at this, okay? So we're going to look at it, and all we're going to do, this was not my idea, by the way. Again, it was uh, uh, ideas from fans who watch the channel. The BLX divided by the money supply, okay? Let's take a look. Well, if you go up here, first cycle, peak in May of 2011, we had another, we, we broke it in... Uh, you know, February, March of 2013 before continuing on up. The next cycle had the peak. We broke it here in May of 2017. How does that compare? Well, you can see that if you just look at the BLX, we also broke it around February of 2013. And then the next time, we also broke it around the same time period. Okay, around the same time period. Now, what's interesting, this is what's really interesting about this. As measured... This is the BLX, so the price of Bitcoin, divided by the money supply. As measured in this way, if you go to the prior top in 2017, we have not even crossed that peak. So that is fairly eye-opening, right? It's fairly eye-opening. So as a measure of the money supply, Bitcoin has not even put in, at this point, it has not even put in a higher high, okay? Now, of course, we know that as measured by you, just as measured by the price of Bitcoin, it has. And it's and in fact, it's up fairly significantly from the prior top. Uh, if we take a measured move, it's up, you know, around 30%, maybe not quite 30%, but somewhere in that ballpark, right? Let's just zoom in to get a, a really accurate, a really, really accurate reading here. It's even actually higher than 30%, maybe about 33% or so. So it's up fairly substantially. Uh, from the last peak, but what's impressive is that when you take the price of Bitcoin and divide it by the money supply, we have not even surpassed the peak of 2017. Now, another interesting thing, if you take to see how far up we rallied after we got to the peak as measured by the price of Bitcoin divided by the money supply, here we went up another almost 3,000%. Here we went up another, you know, 1,200%. So, 1200 3000 you know obviously this is not even this one's not even half let's just say the next one goes up 500% from the from that top if it were to go up 500% then it might put it around this level but what does that mean how does that compare to the price well how 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 well does the price compare to this this was 2900% if we go back and take a look how high did we rally from here was it about the same? Pretty close, but um, you know there there were some differences, of course. Okay, there were some differences. If you and, and again, I'm probably not drawing these exactly perfectly. If you look at the next one, around 1,400 percent compared to 1,200 percent. So this is you know 30 and, and and maybe maybe I just need to to draw these a little bit more carefully to make sure that we're um, looking at exactly the same thing. So 3,300% compared to 2,900%, pretty close. Um, and then 1,400% compared to 1,200%. So these are slightly lower, which makes sense. So if, if this is 500%, which is slightly lower than what we actually could see the price of Bitcoin do, then let's just say the, the price of Bitcoin from this peak goes up another 600%, um, then that would, 
uh, that would end up putting it at, um, let's see, it would end up putting it around uh, $100, $140,000. So that would be around $140,000. And that would take us, you know, I, I, I would like to think it's going to take us a few years to get there. So somewhere in that ballpark. So hopefully this is eye opening for some people to see how quickly recently the money supply has been going up. And to ref, you know, to, to look at that in terms of, okay, well, how strong is the US dollar? We can see the US dollar is, is showing some weakness. And when the US dollar shows weakness, like over here, Bitcoin tends to do pretty well. Since March, the dollar has shown a lot of weakness. However, since March, Bitcoin has shown a lot of strength. So we want to keep an eye on the dollar to see how the dollar is performing, keep an eye on the money supply, and also keep an eye on whether Bitcoin divided by the money supply, the price of Bitcoin divided by the money supply, can put in a higher high. Because so far, it hasn't done it, um, but I imagine it will at, at some point in the not so distant future. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 80,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Also check out the premium list if you want access to the weekly reports, the weekly videos, the alerts channel, the trading view indicators, and a few other things. We have a holiday sale. Check it out before the prices go back up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.